Well, I just opened some new Jumpstart product and I have some thoughts. Hello, in this episode of the uh, Bomb New Cards, I'm going to be covering more information about the Jumpstart product. On this channel, we make Magic the Gathering and Oathbreaker content. If you're interested in that, please subscribe below. Today, I went to my local LGS, Mythic Games, and bought a brand new box of Core 2021, and I was surprised to find out that one of my box toppers was two packs of Jumpstart. I went ahead and I opened them up and I shuffled them together. I haven't had a chance to play with them yet because you have to know somebody else that has these packs and it's a little early. So, I've been looking at the packs and there's been a lot of questions online whether or not this is worth it. I would like to explain and dispel some things in this episode. In this set, there there are 20 themes and a total of 42 different variations of these themes. So let's start out with whether or not Jumpstart is worth it. You have to ask yourself if rarity works the same way as it has in the past. And to be honest, it doesn't. Since some of these packs contain chase cards out of 2021, including three different Planeswalker deck lists I'm aware of, one for Liliana, one for Garouk, and one for Teferi, it's quite possible that some of these themes are going to be worth more. But because they are set deckless, the rarity of cards is going to be affected. So it's more about what deck lists are rare than about what specific cards are rare. So that's part one. Another thing I'd like to mention about the design here that interested me is when you open the foil package, inside is a cellophane wrapped stack of 20 cards. The front facing card, it's actually 21 cards, the front facing card tells you what theme that pack is. So you can kind of almost immediately see if you want to open the cellophane pack to see the rest of the cards, or if maybe you want to see if you can trade this to somebody else still wrapped this way for a theme you're actually hunting for, and I thought that was a good touch. Having opened the pack, I did a quick count of the two themes I got, which was Spooky and Mill, and I'm actually very happy with what I got. And I found out that there's only about 13 cards a pack that aren't lands, and that's really, I think, more for the balancing. And it might actually be 12, because I think I might have counted the thriving land in that number. So viewer discretion is advised. Looking at these numbers, you're paying more than you would pay for a standard pack of magic cards. And you're actually getting less cards, but you're also getting lands. And I think what this comes down to is who this product is meant for. If you're chasing reprints and singles, most of the deck lists contain nothing but one ofs aside from the basic lands, which can help with Oathbreaker and EDH decks. If you're looking for a fun and easy to shuffle up and play format, this is probably a good product for you. If you are a new player, this is probably a good product for you. This product, in my opinion, is not for majority of Magic players that love building their own decks and the creativity that comes with that and the logic and the thought that goes into having to learn the nitty gritty of how this game functions. I think it's very enjoyable for a one of experience when you're playing quickly and you want everybody starting on the same level. And I think it's the next best thing to getting new players into a draft or a sealed event because there's a lower bar to entry and less stress involved, but you are paying more for a deck you do not get to control the contents of because you're opening it blind. So I think for a lot of people, that's going to turn them off. And I think for the people who play Keyforge or people who play sealed deck formats or more board games, this is definitely more their style. And the reason I say board games and card games, you know, tabletop games here is because parts of this game definitely look like other Richard Garfield games. It's easy to see where there may have been some inspiration drawn from both Smash Up and Keyforge in order to put this design together. Having said that, I would really like to hear you guys' thoughts on the total number of themes and rarity in the set, and if there's some reason you're apprehensive about buying this product. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Here on the end card, I'm going to have a playlist for you. It's probably going to link to the other Debon New Cards videos in this Jumpstart series. And then next to it, there should be a video that YouTube recommends for you. Thank you for watching this video, and I'm blowing up.